They became role models to the new believers. Role models. It is, it is what would cause the Apostle Paul to say on two occasions, specifically in the New Testament, in his epistles, follow me as I follow Christ. So a disciple, we said earlier, is someone who has a life worth modeling, who lives a life before another, that they are training in Christ-likeness that is worthy of following. Perhaps part of the problem, part of the reason why so, so many of us are not prepared to disciple others is that we, we know, perhaps, that we don't have a life that is worth being modeled. I don't know. Could it be? They gave individual attention and instruction as a father. Now, if you're paying attention, same text, you know, same text, 1 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 13. I'm not making this up. First, he uses the, the imagery of mother. Now he uses the imagery of father. Now, if you know anything about Paul, you know that he chooses his words carefully. There is the way a mother functions in parenting. And then there is the way a father, well, he's supposed to function in parenting. So discipling is spiritual parenting, if you think about it. But not just in the sum totality. There is the mothering and then there is the fathering. If you've been around us, you, you, you know that we, we call Courtney Pops. And then our mentees tend to end up calling us Pops. Yep, Pops or Dad. And in, in, in uh, well, <laughs> certainly in my case, um, the relationship, that uh, father-son relationship with me and Courtney is, is way stronger than the father-son relationship with my biological father. I've, I've spoken very openly about my father wound. And then I have mentees where it's the same. That, that they literally place me above their biological fathers. Not that I ask them to do so, but where they, there has been father wound and then that role so that's how serious this is. That's the missing element. That gun boy, whether he's 4, 12, 13, 14, or 20 something, or 30 something, that gun boy. Because the big one, them, I consider all of them as gun boys, overgrown boys with dangerous toys. That gun boy, whose father figure was the Don, comes. To your tent meeting or to your church service or whatever and fills out that decision card how is he now suddenly going to operate to function emotionally and an emotionally healthy father if you now expect him no longer to relate to the don who was his dad's if no male male and i'm saying male very specifically if no man in the missionary church steps in in that discipleship context as father. Who is going to fill that void? The Holy Spirit? God the Father? Well, yes, there is that. And thank God that he is Abba and the spirit that he puts in us allows us to call him Abba. But that same Abba instructed and set it that on earth the males are his representatives to convey and to communicate to human beings what Abba, who they cannot see, looks like. So no, we are not going to let anyone off the hook who says, well, the Bible says the Holy Spirit and allows us to, to call him Abba. No, I'm not going to allow us to get off that easily. That girl who has never had a father 
affirm her as a beautiful, wholesome, precious being created by God, beautifully, fearfully, and wonderfully made, who all her life, the only place she has heard that is from the throat of lust driven men, needs men in our churches who become that cloak of fatherhood within the context of discipleship. Our daughter is named Zanele Nekeva, Zanele Zulu, Nekeva Hebrew. The Nekeva means beautiful female in Hebrew. I wanted, we wanted her that every time she hears her name, it is being affirmed that she is beautiful and that she is made beautiful by God. She must never have a desire for a void to be filled by any male. The word of God was, essent, was an essential component of, disciple, of their discipleship. That goes without saying. But the text there in Thessalonians, made, that it was built around the word of God. Whatever, whatever material you are using, whatever discipleship material, whatever discipleship text, whatever books that are a part of the, the formal teaching component of that relationship uh, must be grounded in the word of God. Uh, yep. So I'll, let's end here. One of the goals of the discipler should be to help the disciple to mature, function, be fruitful, and to spiritually reproduce. So I'm going to end here. I know we have a timetable and a schedule, and we perhaps have need, need to um, uh, there's time for some question and so on. Uh, this is just scratching the surface, right? But I hope, oh, let, quickly, I did mention um, the acronym IDEA, Jesus' idea of discipleship, uh, which really sums up all that I've been trying to say. I, for instruction, yeah, he instructed them formally. One of the, and, and uh, what we call the great, uh, sorry, the Sermon on the Mount really is a combination of his teachings. Matthew presenting the most comprehensive summary of his teachings. Instruction, D, demonstration. So he, demo, he, he instructed them, he demonstrated it. So every miracle that he performed, every, every spiritual act that he did, every, every time they saw him go away early in the morning to talk to his father and all of that, that was demonstration. E, experience. He provided experiential opportunities for them to practice the teachings and what he has been demonstrating. And then assessment. He assessed them. So Jesus' idea of discipleship, idea, acronym, instruction, demonstration, experience, assessment. He sent them out, Luke chapter 10, for example, to go with the mandate, go and declare the kingdom, heal the sick, raise the dead, Declare that the kingdom of God is here. And when they came back, he asked them how to give a report and he gave them an assessment. Our process of working with these persons as we invite them to spend time with us, knowing that what we want them to do is to reproduce as we, as we pass on and teach them. We provide instruction. We must demonstrate that which we instruct. We must give them experience, opportunities to, to practice, to experientially do what we have been teaching, right? So Courtney took us on mission trips and he took us on um, outings where we now had to go and, and witness to somebody just as he had taught us how to witness and stuff like that. And then he gave us assessments. So a summary of, of what we've all been saying. I hope that you've been able to see where I, I, I've been trying to get us. Just this mental shift that as an individual, how can I take one person? It's about working with a few, one person or two at a time, 
if every member or more and more of our members decide I'm going to take one person, work with that person for the next, next six months or for the entire year, it doesn't even matter. Before long, we will start to see the exponential growth that is possible because our churches are now growing by multiplication rather than growing by addition.